Hello everyone, welcome back to another video about the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. In this one I'm having a look at the Passage of the Marshes, which is the first quest from the Land of Shadow saga expansion. Now, I've seen a few people posting about this quest over the last few months, saying they found it really difficult to beat this one in solo. So what I wanted to do in this video is show you a deck that I've used to beat this one quite a few times. Um, it's not a power deck by any means, it's not as if it completely stomps this quest. Um, but I've done a few things to the deck to make it um, sort of tweaked and um, geared towards beating this one. Use a few new cards that have come out recently. Uh, what you have to do in this quest is there are three stages. So let's bring those out into play. In the first one, uh, the Taming of Smeagol, you're engaged with Gollum and he's a two-sided enemy. If you defeat him, he'll flip over to his Smeagol side and then he's under your control and you can use him to quest or whatever you want. Um, but it can be quite difficult to deal with him in the early game because he's uh, engaged with you from turn one, immune to non-fellowship uh, player card effects, and he's he can get a plus attack from shadow effects, so you do need a good defender to deal with him. Uh, in the next stage, uh, it's all about locations, so uh, you have to keep adding locations to the staging area, and you need four in the victory display before you can get past that part of the Passage of the Marshes. And then the last part is a kind of, uh, I think it's a 24 point questing stage. Uh, you really just need to quest as much as possible to get through that one. But you can't place progress on it if you're engaged with an undead enemy. I think the reason people might find this one hard is because there are some reasonably tough enemies in it. Um, there are some things that can pop out and surprise you. You can end up engaged with a Nazgul as well. So you need to be able to deal with those, and you need to be able to keep the staging area under control. There's a keyword in this one, uh, a Meyer keyword, and if you don't um, travel to locations, these Meyer tokens will build up on locations in the staging area, and then when they um, have um, the, a number of tokens equal to their Meyer value, they get discarded, and there's a forced effect that triggers and does something nasty. So you do need to keep it under control, really, this quest, and you don't want things to get out of hand because it can spiral out of hand very quickly, but the deck I've got does a really nice job of controlling it. I have to say it's not the most thematic of decks for this part of the saga, because we've got Boromir, and he's of course passed away, spoiler alert, um, by the point this point in the books. But if you don't care about that, and you just want to kind of beat this quest and just write it off and say, I've done it, I'm going to move on to the next one, which by the way is actually harder than this one. Um, uh, what's called Journey to the Crossroads, that one's really difficult I have to say. Um, but if you just want to get past this one, then this deck is perfect for you. So I won't break down all the cards. I think what I'll do is just go straight into a playthrough and I'll explain things as I go along rather than kind of, uh, you know, give you a card for card breakdown of the deck. So looking at the opening hand, what you want to see, I think, is Light of Valinor always whenever you're using Glorfindel. It would be nice to see um, a Burning Brand because we're running Song of Wisdom to put onto Boromir to cancel shadow effects. It would also be nice to see Gondorian Shield. Because we've got Light of Valinor and a little bit of draw and a weapon for Glorfindel, Rivendell Blade, I'm probably going to keep this one. Um, most hands that you get with this deck are probably decent to start off. If you get one of the power cards, Light of Valinor, Rivendell Blade, and so on, then you probably want to keep that hand. So let's just jump straight in. Setup. Put Gollum into play and gauge with the first player. Each player searches the encounter deck for one location, reveals it, and adds it to the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck. So the location you want to search for when you do this is called Soft Myers. Uh, let's go and find one. There it is. So the reason you want to pick that one is because it's only two threat, and there are other locations that are far worse, a four threat one. Um, and also because it's got a travel effect. So all of the locations in this scenario have a travel effect or a travel cost. Um, each player must raise his threat by one to travel here, so we can do that with this deck. We're not too fussed about threat raising because we've got Lore Aragorn. And a lot of the other ones uh, require you to exhaust Smeagol to travel there. That one, for example, uh, you have to spend a Fellowship resource to go to that one, so you could take that one as well if you wanted to. But of course, we don't have Smeagol in play. We've got Gollum, so we need to flip him to the Smeagol side before we can deal with those locations. So I like to start with this one, and that makes the game nice and easy then. So I'll flip this one over. Okay, the players cannot advance unless the first player controls Smeagol, so we need to tame him. Forced, after a player declares any number of attackers against Gollum, discard the top card of the encounter deck. Gollum gets plus X defense for this attack, where X is the discarded card's threat. 
So the maximum you can discard from that effect is four threat. And that means Golem could potentially get six defense, which means you would need 11 attack to guarantee that you flip him. So that's the strategy I take when it comes to this quest. I don't attack him until I know I can definitely get 11 attack and flip him. And with the heroes we've got, we can get to 9 already if we decide not to quest with any of them. We can add Frodo and give him plus 2 attack, or we can use some of our allies. We've got Gandalf in the deck, a couple of other attackers, and they're more than good enough to flip him and guarantee that he goes to Smeagol. So I think that's the best way to play this, is to just tank him until you're ready to actually flip him over. So let's kick it off and see how we get on. And by the way, we've got the Meyer keyword on the location. So at the end of the round, uh, you have to add a resource token to each location in the staging area. And then when that location has resource tokens equal to its Meyer X value, it's immediately discarded. And you can see they've all got forced effects. So when that one's discarded by the Meyer keyword, first player reveals the top card of the encounter deck. So we wanna to try to avoid that as frequently as possible. Some of them aren't too bad. Um, some of them are really nasty. So we'll see how we get on. Let's kick it off. All right, Fohammer, that's a really great card to draw considering we've got a couple of Rivendell blades. So I think here we'll play Light of Valinor on Glorfindel. We always want to play that straight away. And I like the idea of playing a Rivendell blade on him as well. But I might play this Delon's Ruins because I've got two copies of Rivendell blade. Um, I could always discard one of them. So I'm going to play this one, one, two. Okay, Gondorian Shield, I think that's even better to have um, than a Rivendell Blade. That's the power of Daron's Runes in action for you. So I'm going to play that onto Boromir. So that means he's now going to be defending for four for the rest of the game. I'm going to put his defense for four. There we go. So now he can pretty much tank Smeagol, uh, Gollum, sorry, indefinitely uh, without having to worry about the shadow effects, I think. And um, we could play the Song of Wisdom onto Boromir. Um, because we're running Burning Brand, but I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to sit on my resources and wait and see what happens. So here we don't need to quest for a huge amount. I think the most we can reveal is four threat, uh, but we would like to get some progress on there so that we can flip Golem to Smeagol and proceed to stage two uh, as soon as we do that. So I'm going to quest for three with Glorfindel because he doesn't exhaust. And I'll put in Frodo on the quest as well because we can boost him using his action to get plus two willpower. And I'm also going to put in Aragorn. So we've got to seven. Now I could quest with Boromir as well because I can ready him, but it's so early on in the game that we really don't need to do that at this point. So I'm just going to quest for seven, reveal one card. Okay, we hates them. Uh, when revealed, either flip Smeagol to Gollum or Gollum makes an immediate attack. First player may spend one fellowship resource and exhaust the one ring to cancel this effect. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take the attack because we've got Boromir, we can tank him forever. So. Let's give him a shadow card, defend with Boromir. Let's move him over here. Have a look at the shadow card, raise your threat by the attacking enemy's threat. So that's gonna be two, one, two. All right, and that surges. Shifting Quagmire, surge again. Uh, Mire one, so that one is probably gonna uh, leave play this turn, I think. And when Shifting Quagmire is discarded by the Mire keyword, either return a random location to the from the victory display to the staging area or raise each player's threat by one for each location in the victory display. It's not going to do anything this early on in the game. We're not going to have any locations in the victory display, um, and I can't return a random location, so it's really going to whiff that forced effect, so we don't care. It does surge, though. It adds one threat as well. It surges into another card. Candlebearer. Uh, the engaged player cannot reduce his threat. Forced. After Candlebearer destroys a character, it cannot take damage until the end of the round. That's quite a nasty enemy. Um, so we're going to go up to six. So we're currently getting one progress. I think it could be worth um, boosting Frodo uh, using his fellowship resource just to get a little bit more progress. Uh, we're going to be leaving that candle bearer in the staging area. So I think we'll use that. So you want to be judicious about using his ability, but here I think it's worth it. So we'll do one, two, three, get some early progress on there. Get rid of that one. And then travel, we're going to travel to Soft Myers, so we have to raise our threat by one, no problem. So we'll leave those in the staging area. And then combat phase, we've got Gollum engaged. I'm going to ready Boromir for one threat, using his action. Defend. Raise your threat by one for each undead enemy engaged with you. No undead enemies engage with me, doesn't do anything. No damage, because he's only two attack. 
so that's the end of the round. So we're going to get a Meyer keyword on here, Meyer token, sorry, which is going to cause that to be discarded. Again, return a random location from the victory display. There isn't one in there. Or raise each player's threat by one for each location in the victory display. None in there. So it does nothing. So we'll refresh. All right, Dunedain Pathfinder. So this is an ally that's very strange, um, but he's very good in this quest. And if you draw them, you want to hang on to them because you're going to need them when we get to stage 2B. So I'm not going to play that guy. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Rivendell Blade onto Glorfindor. So it gives us the option of actually killing some stuff. Uh, we could potentially engage this candle bearer and kill it if we attack it with Glorfindor and Boromir. And I could easily defend it with Boromir now, so I'll probably do that, I think. And I'm tempted on the idea of drawing two cards with Daron's runes. We could always discard one of these two. Um, I think we're okay for now. I think we'll leave it at that. So questing will do the same as last turn. Five, six, seven. And there's currently three in the staging area. I think I might also quest with Boromir here. Just to get that extra willpower. And try to clear out the soft mires. Because we really don't want to get location locked. So we'll reveal one card. Haunted Mirror. Okay, see, that's why we don't want to have those building up. Um, so we're up against seven. So I'm going to get one progress, and here I'm going to use Frodo's action again, give him plus two willpower to get another two on the soft Myers. So didn't quite clear it, unfortunately. Can't trouble there. We will engage the candle bearer though, and we'll deal out the shadow cards to these guys. So now we're going to ready Boromir for one threat, and I'll defend Gollum first. Nothing, so no damage. Ready Boromir again, and I'm going to defend the candle bearer, and he is going to take a wound from this, at least one. Deal one damage to the defending character, okay, so he's going to take two wounds, one, two. And then we'll ready Boromir for one, and we'll attack the Candle Bearer with Boromir and Glorfindor, minus two defense from the Rivendell Blade, so he is going to die. And then we can exhaust Rivendell Blade, play Fauxhammer, draw three cards, one, two, three. Nice. Okay, refresh. End of the round, we have to do the Meyer keyword, so this one gets one token. We definitely want to travel there next turn because they don't get the Meyer tokens while they're active, only while they're in the staging area. So let's refresh. All right, Burning Brand, that's really good. So what we can do now is we can play the Song of Wisdom onto Boromir for one. And I think, actually, before we do that, it's always better to use these cards first to see what you get. So let's play Deep Knowledge, Doom 2, draw two cards. Okay, so I drew faint there, so that means now I might want to keep a tactics resource. Uh, so I think we will go one Song of Wisdom, play that onto Boromir, and we'll probably use Aragorn's resources here to play Burning Brand onto Boromir as well, just to get that there. And then next turn, we probably want to play Gandalf and get him on the table and do some serious questing using him. Uh, I also would like to see Protector of Lorien, even though I can't play it this turn. It would be nice to have it in hand, although I'm not sure I want to discard any of these cards. Um, discarding Hasty Stroke wouldn't be terrible right now because we've just put Burning Brand onto Boromir. So I think I'm going to play this. One, two. Okay, Light of Alnor. So I'll chuck that away instead because we don't need it because it's already attached to Glorfindor. Questing, we're up against four threat currently. We only want one progress to clear that one out. So we'll do Two, five, seven, again. Tempted to use Boromir. Only got Gollum to worry about. I think we probably want to. And we will reveal one card. Dead things, three threat, another enemy. One, two, three. So we get that one progress we need to clear that one. And I think we use Frodo's resource again, just to get another two. One, two, there we go. So that goes to the victory display. And unfortunately, to travel there, we have to exhaust Smeagol. We can't do it, so that's going to um, go off at the end of this round. But it will take that fourth threat out of the staging area at least, so not terrible. Um, we'll engage the dead things. We have to. Shadow cards. Now, do I want to faint them? They are four attack, and they're not going to get a shadow card, so I'm not going to waste my faint on those. I'm going to really bore here and defend with him twice. So I'll defend Smeagol. That is cancelled by the Burning Brand. Raise him again. Defend. And that's cancelled. Nothing on it anyway. 
So no damage from either of those. And then we will ready Boromir one more time. And we will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 2 defense, kill the dead things. And that's going to let me draw three cards with the Foe Hammer. 1, 2, 3. Nice. Thrall's Map. Really good card to have in this quest because that means we can get around the travel effects. Unfortunately, I didn't get it for that location. All right, that's going to be the end of the round. And we have to do this Mire keyword. So that gets another token. Forced. When Haunted Mirror is discarded by the Mire keyword, search the encounter deck and discard path for an undead enemy, reveal it, and add it to the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck. So if you want to make this as easy as possible for yourself, whenever you have to trigger one of those effects, you want to take the uh, Groping Dead, that one, because it's the easiest enemy, the weakest enemy in the encounter deck. So always take that one if you're trying to make this as easy as possible. And then that one is discarded, I believe. Yeah, immediately discarded. Okay. Uh, so refresh. Now you can see our threat's getting quite high. When it gets to the region of kind of 46 to 48, you really want to reset with Aragorn there. So we're probably going to reset with him this turn. Um, certainly next turn, if not this turn. Um, having a deep knowledge in hand means I could play that now to draw two cards. We'd go to 45, and then we're definitely going to reset at the end of this turn. I think we probably do want to do that. I'd like to get Gandalf on the table this turn. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, I think. And then we will have a resource for Thrall's map on Aragorn. Uh, so that looks good. I think we'll go Thrall's map. Make sure we can get around locations. And we could also play Envoy of Pelagir for one which I think is probably worth it. Uh, let's do deep knowledge for two threat. One, two, one, two cards. Another copy of Thrall's map. Another Dunedain Pathfinder, so we'll keep him in hand for now. And we will go, let's do one, two, three, four, five. And I want to keep that resource there so that I've got access to faint if I need it. And we'll play Gandalf. So he doesn't exhaust to commit to the quest. So now we're in a really good position to attack Gollum, because we've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13 potentially, and we need 11 to flip him to guarantee it. We have to engage this Groping Dead this turn as well, so I need to make sure I leave um, a couple of points of threat uh, to be able to defend twice with Boromir. So questing we can do 4, 7 right off the bat just with Glorfindor and Gandalf. I think that could be enough, to be honest with you. We've got 2 in there. And we only need one more on the quest, so I'm not going to quest with anybody else this turn, just these two. And we'll reveal one card. All right, Morgul Wraith. Okay, that's nasty. Um, four threat. Cannot have non-Morgul attachments. While the one ring is exhausted, Morgul Wraith gets minus 30 engagement cost and gains immune to player card effects. So he's a really good target for that feint that I've kept in hand. That was really lucky. All right, so he adds four. One, two, three, four. We get that one point of progress we need to clear that. So we've got six, but we can't go through until we flip Gollum to Smeagol. In counter phase, we have to engage both of these because this is going to engage no matter what we do. So we'll deal on out some shadow cards. Okay, how do we want to do this? He's not currently immune to player card effects, so I think we're going to faint him uh, because we want to flip Smeagol to Gollum, or Gollum to Smeagol rather. So he's not going to do anything, so we'll just move that there. And this Groping Dead is attacking for three, and Gollum's attacking for two. So if I defend both with Boromir, I'll be able to attack Gollum for three, six, ten, eleven, which is exactly what we need to guarantee he flips. So I think we want to do that. We could also attack the Groping Dead with Boromir. Wouldn't kill it. But I think it would be worth it just to put the damage on it. So let's do that. Let's defend them first. So we'll defend this one with Boromir. Cancelled. Not going to do anything. Ready. And we will defend the Groping Dead with Boromir. Cancelled. Doesn't do anything. And now, let's see. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we can guarantee him. So let's ready Boromir. And we will attack the Groping Dead. Do 2 damage to it. Uh, hang on a second, I need to kill that, because if I don't, then I cannot reduce my threat. So I have to take that back a second. 
It's the tricky part of this quest. So is there a way that we can kill that without losing our chance to flip Golem? I don't think there is uh, because we can't do 11 if we exhaust another character. So in that case, we are going to have to do probably five to kill the groping dead. So we'll get rid of that. And then we'll use the rest of our attack power on this Morgul Wraith. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, minus two defense. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, which is not quite enough. So minus two defense um, with nine attack is going to do seven. I do believe. Let me just <laughs> recheck that. Nine minus two is seven. Yeah, okay. Uh, shadow cards discarded. Now we'll refresh. And in the refresh phase, I'm going to reset my threat. So I go down to 28, and then I'm going to go up by one, and I also have to go up by two for Gandalf to cancel the effect of him being discarded from play. All right, really we just want to flip Golem this turn, and we've got lots of questing power that doesn't exhaust, so I think we're going to be absolutely fine on that front. Um, I'm just going to keep those resources for faint. I think the one thing I'll probably do here is play the Envoy of Pelagir. Um, so I'm going to do one, two, and play her, just so I have another body on the board. And I'll give her resource to Boromir, so I could faint twice if I need to. Okay, questing. We're just going to do seven with Glorfindel and Gandalf. Um, nothing can equal that. Reveal one card. Stagnant Pools. Three threat. Mire five. Four. So when Stagnant Pools is discarded by the Mire keyword, each player must raise his threat by five. Stagnant Pools gets plus one threat for each Mire token on it. Travel. Exhaust Smeagol to travel here. All right. So we get three. So we get another four. We don't need this four. It's fine. We're going to travel there, and we're going to do that by exhausting Thor's map to make that location the active location in the travel phase. So we don't need to pay the cost to travel there. In combat phase, we'll do like some shadow cards. So here, I think I'm going to faint the Morgul Wraith again, um, just so that Boromir doesn't take another wound. So he's not going to attack me again. And then I need to defend Gollum, so I'll do that with Boromir. Cancelled, doesn't do anything. Get rid of that shadow card as well. And then now we're going to attack, let's see, we need 11. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we could also attack the Morgul Wraith. Um, so if we use Glorfindor to attack the Wraith, it will take one wound. So Glorfindor and Envoy of Pelago would kill it. And I could do 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 if I already Boromir, so that's worth it, I think. So we'll do one, two, three, four, minus two defense. We'll do two wounds to the Wraith and kill that. And then we'll ready Boromir for one threat. And we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven to Gollum. Uh, when we attack him, we discard the top card of the encounter deck, and he's going to get plus X defense for this attack. Three, so he goes up to five defense, ten, uh, in total, 5 defense and 5 health. We did 11, so he's going to flip. Flip him to Smeagol and exhaust Smeagol. Perfect. And then we immediately progress. So, when revealed, if the number of locations in the staging area is less than the number of players in the game, which it is, discard cards from the encounter deck until a location is discarded, then add the discarded location to the staging area. Okay. 1, 2, another Morgul Wraith. Uh, I've just realized I've made a mistake. Some of those uh, location should have gone to the victory display. Uh, I think I might have quested past one or two um, and forgotten that effect, so apologies if I did that. Make sure you don't make that mistake if you play this quest. Although looking at it, um, I don't remember traveling to any of these. So, in fact, actually I don't think I did make a mistake there. So we need to keep discarding until uh, we find a location. Add that to the staging area. All right, and then we flip that one over. So we need 12 progress. Progress cannot be placed on locations in the staging area. The players cannot advance unless the first player controls Smeagol, and there are at least four locations in the victory display. Forced at the end of the staging step, if the number of locations in the staging area is less than the number of players in the game, reveal the top card of the encounter deck. So that's where our Dunedain Pathfinder is going to come in handy, because we can uh, put him into play, 
and then search the top five cards in the encounter deck for a location and add it to the staging area if we um, don't have one in there when requesting. All right, so that's the end of the round. Um, that's going to get a Meyer token. Uh, so we have to reveal the top card of the encounter deck, actually, unfortunately. So that's discarded, and we reveal the top card. A fell light. When revealed, put the topmost undead enemy in the encounter discard pile into play and engage with you. Each undead enemy engaged with you makes an immediate attack. So I think all my characters would be ready um, by this point, because we've actually gone past the start of the refresh phase, because um, you do that at the end of the round. So the topmost undead enemy is the dead things. So that doesn't get shuffled, and that is going to make an immediate attack. So Boromir would be ready here. So I'm going to defend it with him. This is cancelled, whatever the shadow effect is, it doesn't do anything. So now we're going to ready, but Boromir will be exhausted because he's just defended that attack. I hope that makes sense, but that's how you'd play it in real life. Okay, uh, we also have to raise our threat by two for Gandalf. So really we want to quest really hard now and try and get rid of some of these um, locations. So because we don't have a location in the staging area, I'm going to play a Dunedain Pathfinder for free. And I can look at the top five cards in the encounter deck and put one of the locations I find into the staging area. So that one's got Surge. So we are going to take that one because that won't trigger the Surge because it's added to the staging area. It's not revealed. Uh, so we have to shuffle the encounter deck now. So that's not going to um, cause that forced effect to go off now, because we're going to have one location in there absolutely guaranteed. No problems there. And I think we're not going to play anything else. We're just going to quest. And we'll quest for four, five, six, seven. I want to quest for a good amount. Try to get through the active location and get uh, two more into the victory display after that one. Uh, so we'll do 7, 8, 9 with Frodo. 10, 11, no reason not to with him. Uh, 12, 13, and I guess I can put in the Envoy of Pelagir as well. And I can put in Smeagol because we don't need to uh, have him ready because we've got Thor's map. So we'll reveal one card. Okay, Call of the Ring. When revealed, the first player must choose either search the encounter deck discard part and victory display for a Nazgul enemy and add it to the staging area or exhaust the one ring and reveal the top card of the encounter deck. So I know that both Nazgul enemies are in the discard pile. So I think it's safe to uh, exhaust the one ring and reveal the top card. Here we go. Haunted Mirror, good, another location. So that gives us five threat in the staging area. So we're gonna get 11 progress. Uh, we get seven on there and four on here. Good, and we will send that one to the victory display. And I can travel to one of these two. I can either spend a fellowship resource to travel there, or I can uh, travel to that one. I think we're going to travel to this one just to stop the Meyer keyword going off. So we're going to throw us map that one, make it active, and then we've got this dead things to deal with. Shadow card for that one. I think we could defend this one with Gandalf um, simply because we've got hasty stroke in hand. So if it does get a nasty shadow effect, uh, we can cancel it, no problem. Or saying that, we could just do it with Boromir, because it's going to cost me a threat either way um, to deal with it. So let's do that. It's ready Boromir for one. And I'll defend it with him. Deal one damage. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything. So we'll do three, seven, minus two defense. Dead. Refresh. I have to go up by two for Gandalf. All right. Another Envoy of Power Gear. Let's get that onto the table. Uh, we'll do one, two from Aragorn, and we'll play that and put the resource onto Aragorn. Actually, we can't. We'll put it onto Boromir. And then I'm going to do one, two and play Mablung just for the extra questing power. I don't need to play one of these this turn because we've got a location in the staging area. Questing, we're going to go all in here. We'll do three, four, five, six, seven with Gandalf. Covered him over. 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 15, 17, and we'll do these two as well, I think. If they die, it's not a big deal. Uh, so let's double check that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Good. 
reveal one. Call the ring again. Okay. Search in encounter deck, discard palm victory display for a Nazgul and add it to the staging area. Or exhaust the one ring and reveal the top card in encounter deck. Let's do that. Okay. Surge doomed one. And that should have a resource token on it, by the way. When revealed, attached to the current quest, counts as a condition attachment with the text Force. At the end of the refresh phase, place one Mire token on each location in the staging area, then discard Creeping Marshes. Alright, I don't think that will affect us, actually, but it will surge uh, into a Candle Bearer. Alright, so that adds three threat, so we've got seven in there. And that means we're going to get 12 progress, so I want to hurry this up a little bit. So I might do another two with Frodo, we can get nine. That'll be more than enough to clear that actually, so we don't need to do it. So we'll send that one to the victory display and we will get this one up to 13. And we're gonna travel there, Thor's map, get that one active. And we need one more location in the victory display to travel to the next part, uh, progress, sorry, to the next part of the quest. This candle bearer is gonna engage, nothing I can do about it. And what do we want to do? We want to kill it without raising our threat. So maybe we defend with Gandalf and then do one, two, three, four, five, six, minus two defense and kill it. If it gets a nasty shadow effect, we can cancel it with hasty stroke. So let's see. Attacking enemy gets plus one, plus three if it's Gollum. Uh, that'll be six. It's going to do two wounds. I think that's fine. One, two. There we go. And then we'll attack three, six, minus two. It's dead. Okay, we'll refresh, and now we're in a bit of a tricky position because Gandalf is causing our threat to raise um, by two every turn. So I'm probably going to keep him in play for this turn, and we'll see what happens next turn because we really need to quest through that one quickly. Uh, we've got one card left in the encounter deck, so this Doomsday Pathfinder is actually not going to do anything, I think, if I look um, in the encounter deck. If that's not a location, he'll just get discarded. So that's a bit tricky. So I guess we can't use him. We just have to quest for as much as possible and reveal two cards. Provided that's uh, not a location, of course. So quest for seven, just with Glorfinn and Gandalf. We need five to clear that one. If we reveal four threat, um, we would need nine, but we might get another card so potentially we need to quest for 13. Uh, so we'll do two with Frodo, and we can boost him by two if we need to. Another two. And we'll do Mablung, because he's only two. All right, reveal one card. Not a location. Peril. Either raise your threat by one for each character you control that is committed to the quest, or deal one damage to each character committed to the quest. That's going to be damage. Because if I raise my threat by one, uh, I'm done. <laughs> so we'll do... One damage to these guys. One, two, three, four, five. And that was the end of the staging step. Uh, so we have to reveal another one, another encounter card. Just notice that one. End the refresh phase, place one Mario token on each location in the staging area, then discard Creeping Marshes. I don't think that would get discarded if that then doesn't happen. So let's ignore that. So we're going to reshuffle the encounter deck, reveal one card. Dead things, all right, three threat. 10 progress, five on there, five on here. This is just gonna go straight to the victory display and we're gonna to progress to stage three because we now have four locations in there. Uh, so we'll reveal this one. When revealed, each player searches the encounter deck and discard path for an undead enemy and puts it into play, engage with him. Shuffle all locations in the victory display into the encounter deck, all right? So when you do this, if you want to make this easy for yourself, you're going to take the groping hands again, whatever they're called, groping dead, sorry. It's got a hand on it, so that's confusing. And we'll shuffle that, and then we have to shuffle these four into there. Okay, shuffle. And then we flip this over. So 24 progress required. While any player is engaged with an undead enemy, progress cannot be placed on this stage. The players cannot defeat this stage unless the first player controls Smeagol. If the players defeat this stage, they win the game. Okay, so we're going to engage both of these now because there's nothing to travel to. Deal out shadow cards and we just need to kill them and then quest like crazy next turn and hope we don't get any more undead enemies engage with us. So let's defend. 
Let's see, we'll defend that one with Boromir, because it's attacking for four, and this shadow effect's cancelled, doesn't do anything anyway. And then the Groping Dead, we could chump block. Um, that forced effect isn't going to do anything, but maybe it's safer to just defend it with Gandalf. Um, and we can probably kill both of them. Let's see, five. So we can kill that with Aragorn and the Envoys. And then this one also needs, it needs seven. So we can do one, two, three, minus two defense, plus two. That's enough to kill it. So we'll do that. Defend this one with Gandalf. No shadow effects, so no damage. And then attacking back, we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Kill that one. And we'll do one, two, three, four, five, minus two defense. Kill that one. Nice. Refresh, and we'll keep Gandalf around for this turn. One, two. All right, I've drawn an Ancient Mathem. Nothing to put it on, though. Um, so what we're going to do here is we will play um, Protector of Lorien onto Boromir for one. And that means I can discard cards to either give him defense or willpower. And really, we just want to quest for as much as possible. The one risk um, that we have, and that one should get discarded, by the way, because we've moved on. Uh, one risk we have here is a treachery that can put an undead enemy into play, engage with us. We just have to take that risk, unfortunately. Um, the other thing we need to consider is that there is a treachery that does one damage to all questing characters, so we could potentially lose a lot of willpower here as well. So with that in mind, we're going to keep Frodo out, because if he dies, we lose. So we can't quest with him, we just quest with everybody else that we can, and if they die, you know, shit happens. Let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Currently up against nothing. Reveal one card. There it is, Bitter Reek. When revealed, either raise your threat by one for each character you control that is committed to the quest, or deal one damage to each character committed to the quest. So that's going to be the damage, funnily enough. So we're going to lose one, two, three, four, five, six, ten willpower. It's pretty nasty. Uh, Gandalf's going to die. And uh, these guys are going to take a wound each. So we lost 10, so we go down to 8. Uh, so I'm going to discard 3 cards uh, to protect of Lorien to give Boromir plus 3 willpower. So it'll be 1, 2, and probably we might need those guys. I'll do. Let's do one of them. Mm, I'm tempted on Hasty Stroke. Let's do one of them. 3. So we're going to get 11. Ooh, close, close game. Refresh. Nice, Arwen turned up at the perfect time. Um, so here we'll do one, two, and play Arwen. And I'm kind of tempted to just hopefully take a location just to get the extra two willpower, but if we get a location with two threat or more, then he's not going to give us any net gain, so I don't think he's worth it. Um, we won't use that, we'll just quest with everybody we've got. We'll do one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Plus one defense for uh, Boromir with Arwen's response. I can't quest for Frodo in case we get another bitter reek. The chances of getting one are really low, but just in case uh, we would lose. So here we go. One card. A fell light. Okay. When we'll put the topmost undead enemy in the encounter disco part into play, engage with you. Each undead enemy engaged with you makes an immediate attack. All right. Uh, so it's the one in here. So, of course, what that means now is we can't put any progress on the quest. Um, because we're engaged with an undead enemy. So this is going to make an immediate attack. I think we probably have to uh, ready Boromir for one uh, and defend with him. It's cancelled. And then we don't get any progress. Combat phase, deal a shadow card. We can feint him. Uh, so he won't attack, get rid of the shadow card, and then we need to kill it. So we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 2 defense, and we'll give Frodo plus 2 attack. Uh, so we're doing 6, minus 2 defense, so he's dead. And we're on 49 threat, we're so close to losing, come on, we can do it, we can do it this turn. I think we just quest with everybody, and we take the risk. If we get the bitter reek, we lose. If we don't get enough willpower, we lose. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
Hope not bitter reek. Good. Groping dead for two. And we can discard one, two, three cards. One, two, three to go up to 15. And we'll also pay one from Frodo to make him plus two willpower. 17, we get 15 progress. 26. Just enough to win. There we go, that was really close. Much closer than a lot of the other games, I have to say. Um, I don't think that went badly, but it doesn't normally um, put up that much of a fight. Still, as you can see, interesting playthrough. Um, not trivializing the quest by any means. Building around the quest, trying to make it interesting while giving you a deck that can give you, um, I think, a strong chance of beating it anyway. Um, so yeah, if you are stuck on this quest, I think this deck can definitely help you out. Um, as I said, I've beaten this quest a lot of times with this deck. Uh, I'm glad that was a, a tricky playthrough because um, it showed what the deck can do. It's not a power deck by any means. I think it's sort of like a, a soft Boromir deck. You're using Boromir without make him, making him crazy, although we do have the Gondorian shield, which means he can defend infinitely. Um, you might want to add some threat lowering effects if you don't uh, like to live on the edge as much as I do with this deck. I haven't got anything in there to lower threat other than Aragorn. So you could definitely add Elrond's Council. Um, as you can see, I've got a lot of resources on Glorfindel, so you could add um, the Galadrim's Greeting as well. I did get Gandalf quite early and kept him around for a long time. I think if I'd drawn another copy of him, I would have let him uh, be discarded much earlier and then just play him again to save that two threat. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you find this useful if you are stuck on this quest. Um, do let me know what you think, as always. I'll put the uh, deck list in the description below. And in the meantime, I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.